Michael Rossi, the most NHL-ready player in the 2020 entry draft, and could he go as high as second overall? Let's talk about it now. so glad you're watching the first scouting report video of the 2020 nhl entry draft is here and that is marco rossi an incredibly talented center who's 5'9 179 so definitely more undersized as compared to centers that we usually see getting drafted potentially in the top five but we're really gonna be diving in on what rossi brings to his game stylistically statistically also compare him to other talented Austrian players in the NHL, as only 15 players from Austria have ever been drafted. Only five have played over 100 uh, points, uh, over 100 games. And we're also going to look at what he brings stylistically to his game, how he compares to other players with similar size, who the top centers are this draft, and then who he compares to based on his projection, and lastly, what team he fits best with. So before we get into this content, if you're new to the channel, Feel free to hit that subscribe button, that like button, and if you're returning, I'm so glad you're here. It's going to be a lot of content coming your way for 2020. We are really revamping how the production value is of these videos, so as you're going to notice, we're now going to have multiple different images being used throughout the video to have statistics put up on the screen so you're able to view those as you're listening. So let's get right into the content, and if you enjoy it, if you have any comments, feel free to comment that below as well. So Marco Rossi Right now, if we're looking at the top nine scouting services in terms of most publicly available data, right now he's averaging 6.89 as his draft location. The highest numbers that we're seeing is draft site putting him at fourth, whereas International Scouting Service puts him at seventh, as well as McKean Hockey. NBC Sports also has him at seventh, and then Future Considerations, as well as NHL.com, have him at eighth. So there's a lot of variability as to where Rossi could go. Elite Prospects has him at fifth, and so potentially these higher numbers could be where we see him. I think he does have a chance to go as high as second overall if he continues to put up the performance that he has. Now, obviously, right now, OHL and other leagues are being shut down, so we'll see, is he able to continue these numbers? What is it going to look like moving forward? But at least for right now, based on how his combine is, he really has solidified himself, in my opinion, as at least the third best center of this draft, if not the second best center. Now, when we look at centers this draft, of course, we all know Quentin Byfield. I did a video on Byfield versus Lafreniere, generational Lafreniere potentially versus elite Byfield. Feel free to check out that video. I really dive in on what they bring as two players. A lot of people have been hyping up Byfield, who is... 11 months younger than Rossi, and I'll talk about stylistically what the difference is there, but then you also have Anton Lundell, Tim Schutzel, Lucas Raymond, who could be a winger, as well as Schutzel, and then Cole Perfetti. There's been a lot of comparison between Perfetti and Rossi, but overall, Rossi brings so much more playmaking ability than any of those other players mentioned, similar to Byfield in terms of overall uh, projection long term, but I think Rossi could be NHL ready, whereas none of the others are, and so that might be the selling point. Rossi, 18 years old, like I said, September 23rd, 2001 is the birthday, meaning he missed the 2019 draft by simply 10 days. And so when that is the case, when you look at someone like Byfield, who's 11 months younger, two things stick out here. The first is that Byfield had 82 points this year in 45 games played. Rossi had 120 points in 56 games played. So when we break down points per game, Rossi is at 2.14, Perfetti and Byfield are at 1.82. So clearly Rossi is more of that NHL-ready player, at least in terms of statistical ability. But Byfield being 11 months younger, we're more or less expecting Rossi to be putting up draft plus one year numbers, given that he could have been drafted last year. And so 2.14, obviously amazing stats, but we do expect that from someone who more or less is a draft plus one year player. So long term, could Byfield be as good as that next year? It's very possible. And so that's why a lot of people are saying Byfield should go at least two or three, depending on where Stutzel goes. Rossi, though, definitely could go top five. And so Rossi, 5'9", 179, like I said, he's Austrian, he's a left shot second year in the OHL for the Ottawa 67s. If you look at his stats last year in the OHL, 
53 games played, 29 goals, 36 assists, 65 points. So overall, good showing. If we consider that to be his draft year, as I said, barely missed the draft last year, those numbers probably would have vaulted him into first round, end of the first round contention. In the playoffs, Rossi had 17 games played, 6 goals, 16 assists, 22 points. The story being here that his team, the Ottawa 67s, swept the Sudsbury Wolves, Oshawa Generals, and Hamilton Bulldogs all 4-0, but then lost, of course, to Guelph Storm 2-4 in the finals for the Cup. Overall, Rossi having that tremendous playoff experience, and he was the 8th highest scorer in the playoffs. He definitely would have been a first-round pick last year. Nick Suzuki was the first highest scoring player in the playoffs, 16 goals, 42 points. So certainly much higher there. Sasha Kamensky had the second most, uh, Isaac Ratcliffe third, and then Owen Tippett, as just another well-known name, was tied for Rossi at eighth. But if we look at what Rossi brought going into his first OHL season, which really cemented him as a potential first-round pick, and then this year, like I said, probably more of a draft plus one year, so a lot of talent there, Rossi has always been a step above the rest in terms of statistics. Before he came to the OHL, he played in the U-20 league in uh, Switzerland, 1.35 points per game. Before that, he played in the under-17 league with 1.68, moved up to the most elite players under-17, 1.85 points per game. The year before that, he played in the under-15s, 1.71 points per game. So this is someone that has always dominated every league that he's been in, and then in the OHL for his career, 1.70 and like I said this year 2.14 so Rossi has always lit up numbers in terms of stats this is someone who's always been ready now if we look at this year's numbers 56 games played 39 goals 81 assists 120 points so clearly we do see a massive growth in terms of goals per game we see a tremendous growth in terms of assists per game 36 assists to 81 assists on the screen right now is the statistic breakdown in terms of goals, assists, and points per game, how that increase is. So feel free to check that out. And overall, the physicality remained about similar. 40 penalty minutes, 32 penalty minutes, plus 51 last year, plus 69 this year. Rossi is someone that is definitely a two-way player, which you don't always see from someone who is 5'9", but I'll get into that. He was the highest scoring player on his team, in fact, the highest in all of the OHL. Third highest scorer on his team is Jack Quinn, right winger, so definitely winged Rossi most of the year. 62 games played, 52 goals, 37 assists, 89 points. So a tremendous goal scoring year for Quinn. Quinn is potential late first rounder this year. Now we've mainly talked about Nicholas Robertson leading the OHL in goals at 55. Quinn is right there with 52. Given Quinn played 62 games for those 52, Robertson only played 46 games for the 55, so clearly much higher goals per game. Connor McMichael has 47 goals in 52 games, Kaliev 44 and 57, and then Perfetti 37 and 61. So when Rossi fits in with that 39 and 56, he is scoring more goals per game and just more goals period than Perfetti and fits in somewhere similarly to where someone like Kaliev is a little bit behind that. So overall, we're not seeing Rossi being this true sniper like someone like Kaliev, but definitely a very talented goal scorer. In terms of OHL assists, he leads the OHL in assists. Second most is Cole Perfetti with 74. Like I said, Rossi had 81. Ryan Merkley, the very boomer bust defender, had 61 assists in 60 games. Philip Tomasino, last year's first round pick, he had 60 and 62. Akiel Thomas, obviously very well thought, 60 and 49. Connor McMichael, 55 and 52. And then Kalyev rounds it out, 54 and 57. So a lot of decent numbers there in terms of assists per game, but nothing comes close to 81 and 56 that Rossi has. And when we're comparing Rossi's numbers, it's very tough to compare them to Byfield. Like I said, 11 months different. But we can compare him to Akiel Thomas, Connor McMichael, Tomasino, and Kalyev, who all more or less would have been in his draft year if Rossi was just a couple of days earlier in terms of his birth. And when we compare him to all those numbers, he is destroying them in assists and points overall. So Rossi definitely fits in at least as a mid-round pick in the first round, given where he went last year with these other players. Now, 
Like I said, Rossi, 2.14 points per game. Perfetti, Byfield, 1.82. If we break down what Byfield has done this year, 45 games played, 32 goals, 50 assists, 82 points. So we see a very talented player in terms of assists as well. Byfield is 6'4", 214. So a lot of great projectable size down the middle, as opposed to Marco Rossi, 5'9", 179. Someone like Rossi, a lot of people are going to say he should be a winger or he needs to increase his speed and his momentum because you need quick players in order to play at that size. He does have that ability to be very speedy, amazing acceleration. We'll talk about that. But the question is how easily can he pivot and shift given his size? Now, if we break down undersized players in the NHL, there is only one player that is a center that is similar to Rossi's size. And that's when it gets questionable, what can Rossi do? Now, Rossi is 5'9". Jack Hughes went first overall this year, 5'11". We know Jack Hughes had some struggles this year. Mainly, it was the fact that he was a bit smaller, 5'11". Didn't have a lot of weight with him. The physicality wasn't there. The consistency wasn't there. He did play on the wing of Nico Heischer, so we might see Rossi shifting there as well. But Hughes kind of struggled. Now, if you look at other players that have lack of size, Cole Caulfield, obviously a winger, he went 15th last year, 5'7". Yamamoto went 22nd there before that, 5'8". What an amazing season for Yamamoto this year. Then we see guys getting drafted a little bit later. Debrinkat, 5'7". Martian, 5'9". Arvidsson, 5'9". Goudreau, 5'9". Tyler Johnson, 5'8". Cam Atkinson, 5'8". Connor Sheary, 5'8". Zuccarello, 5'8". As for a defender, Jared Spurgeon, 5'9", but then the last forward, Jonathan Marcheseau, 5'9". And so what we see here overall is every single player I just named, with the exception of Jack Hughes and Tyler Johnson, are all wingers, and Johnson sometimes is a winger. And so what this means is there is no one in the NHL that is the size that Rossi is who is an effective top six, let alone top line center. And so Rossi really has a lot to say for his game. He has so amazing statistics showing that he can do this. But when we talked about Yamamoto really breaking the mold and being a high first-round selected 5'8 player, then Caulfield going as high as 15th at 5'7, some people were saying he should have been top 5, obviously fell. But these two players really broke the mold in terms of where someone their size can go. Can someone who is 5'9, so taller than both of them, but he is a center when we want to see good size down the middle, can he go top five. Jack Hughes, 5'11", did go first, but we see those struggles this year. So is this what Rossi can do? There's a lot of question marks here. But if we look at what he brings stylistically to his game, he does play physical despite his size. We don't just see that in penalty minutes, but we see that in his two-way ability. He has very quick ability to get on that back check. He's able to get back to the defensive zone, and overall that's with great hockey IQ in the back end, good vision from the back end, good defensive reads, He also is very consistent in the defensive end. This is someone that plays a full 200-foot game. And in a lot of ways, I would compare Marco Rossi's uh, junior career to someone like Pierre-Luc Dubois. Dubois, obviously much bigger than Rossi, 6'3". So there's no comparison there physicality-wise. But Dubois was someone who was said, you're going to be a winger, but prove that he could be a center with his size down the middle. Now, Rossi does not have that size, But Dubois really sold the fact that he was a center, not based on his size, because he didn't overall push the size. He sold his play based on his 200-foot game. And then it was expected that his offensive game would transition from a winger to a center because of this 2-foot game. I think we can see that from Marco Rossi as well. This 200-foot game is very well built. I think Anton Lundell is probably a better two-way player. I think in some ways Lundell could be a better caught Kanyemi. But Rossi has a very good two-way game, very good down ice vision, and he's also very patient and allows the play to set up. In addition to that, his defensive entries, I think, can be very strong for any team because he's very good at face-offs. And so I think this is someone that you want in the defensive end, but also the offensive. So despite being 5'9", I think Rossi is someone that we want to have. Now, he is someone that has elite speed on breakaways. He's also someone that can lead or create a rush. He also has very good acceleration and does so with very few steps because he has a large stride overall, really hits that offensive tempo very quickly. And so if there is a defensive mistake or a turnover, his acceleration always allows him to get back there quickly. 
So while there are a lot of issues we could say about his size, Rossi stylistically brings so many positives that it should outweigh those issues. He drives the net with power. He can grind it out. In a lot of ways, I see some Brady Kachuk in his game. I don't see that with the physicality, with the chirping, but in terms of being a power forward driving to the net, Rossi does that very well, even being a center. Also has very good puck skills, truly masterful with the puck. This is not someone that's going to let the puck get away. Amazing playmaker. Great edge work allows him to do this, as well as his balance on the puck. Like I said, he can break out with elite speed, and so that allows him to use these playmaking abilities and doing anything that he wants to do with the puck. Whether that's his dekes and his cuts, which I would say are NHL level already, his slap shot has great power and accuracy. He releases it very quickly and does it from any location. So it doesn't have to be at the point. It can be in the corner. It can be up close. Rossi has so many options in his arsenal. Also a very good backhand shot. So there's so many options that Rossi brings to his game while also being an elite playmaker that I think no matter what, we're going to see Rossi be in a very effective top six center. The question becomes, what is Rossi's overall potential? Now, I'm saying that he is at least a second-line center, if not first-line center, and I 100% think Rossi is NHL ready. We can see that with just where the fact he is in his development, given that he is 11 months older, but he's putting up very strong numbers, leading the OHL at only 5'9 as a center. So there are no questions in my mind how effective Rossi can be. Yes, he is playing with Jack Quinn on the wing. Very good duo right there, but I think Rossi is proving time and time again that he is, in fact, ready. It'll be interesting to see what happens, because Jack Hughes was not ready. But Jack Hughes also much younger in his draft, the youngest player in the NHL right now, versus Rossi, who would come in and be more or less the same age. And so the question is, how could they perform with each other? I think Rossi, compared to Jack Hughes, might have a better entry into the NHL, given everything that he's bringing and the fact that he is older. While Hughes might have a higher upside, I think Rossi's more ready. So there's a lot of questions here that we have to juggle. So like I said, second line center, if not first line center, I think the overall for the career, what we're expecting year in and year out from Rossi is about 20 goals, 50 assists, 70 points. So we're not talking about this elite goal score, but I think 20 goals, very possible. For three years in a row now, Pierre-Luc Dubois has been really centering right around 20 to 25 goals, and about 50 points is what we're looking at, maybe 60, 65. I think Rossi uh, statistically will have a similar output, but my comparison for Rossi is in fact Nico Heischer. I'll get into that in a moment, but first let's talk about Rossi being Austrian. The fact is he lacks international experience because he is Austrian. He doesn't have that world junior experience that other players in this draft would. Now, the best Austrian players in the NHL ever, like I said, only 15 have ever been drafted. Only five have 100-plus uh, games. The highest ever, Thomas Vanek, fifth overall 2003 to the Sabres. Of course, in his career, 1,029 games. Overall, he's been known as a goal scorer, 373 goals, 416 assists, 789 points. So definitely no complaints from Vonick's game. Grobner and Raffle are the next most effective Austrian players the NHL has ever seen. 640 games played for Grabner, 276 points. Raffle, 470 games played, 152 points. So really, aside from Vonick, we have not seen a top six Austrian player. The other two, Grabner and Raffle, much lower, probably more of your... Uh, middle six, bottom six type players. So the question is, will Rossi be the best Austrian ever to go to the NHL? Could he compete with what Vonick has number-wise, obviously Vonick being a winger? Now, Nico Heischer, him being Swiss, might be the best Swiss player of all time. And so there is, in a sense, some comparisons here as neither come from a background that has a ton of hockey experience in the NHL. And so both of them aren't coming with tremendous international experience, so he sure did have more. It's an interesting comparison to make. Now, Nico Heischer, a lot of scouts have also said it's a good comparison for Rossi. Of course, first overall pick, 2017 by the Devils. He is six foot, so a little bit similar to Rossi. Rossi being 5'9", Dubois, like I said, 6'3". I do think Rossi has comparisons to Dubois in terms of 200-foot game, but I think Heischer is the better overall comparison. He's sure extremely creative, very gifted passer, very accurate with his shot, also very powerful and quick releases, great edge work, very quick on the puck, 
Also, amazing down ice vision, which I think is the number one comparison we can make with Rossi. The vision is fantastic there. I would argue Rossi might be the best playmaker of the draft. Also, very good puck control for Heischer. His dekes are fantastic, and we see that with Rossi as well, even in their junior development for both players, NHL ready at that time for the dekes, for the control with the puck. Amazing stick ability defensively for Heischer, and overall strong positioning. I want to point this out for Nico Heischer. It's a stat that may not be widely known about his game, which really compares to Rossi. In his rookie year, he played half a minute on the penalty kill per game. That increased to 40 seconds to now nearly a minute at 55 seconds per game. Overall, just three seasons later to have more or less a 30-second increase to about a minute on ice per game on the penalty kill, so he was only 21 years old. This is shows how effective Nico Heischer is as a two-way player. I'm not saying he's bark off by any means, but this is extremely effective. And I think overall, someone like Heischer can have a very similar output to what Rossi might potentially have. I think Rossi could come in and easily do 30 seconds on ice per game on the penalty kill. Now, Heischer also has a very strong output on the power play. Rookie year, 2 minutes and 3 seconds per game. Following year, 2 minutes and 54 seconds, and then 2 minutes and 41 seconds. So I think we're going to see this output as well. Time on ice increased from 16 minutes to 18 minutes, and then about stayed to 18 as well. So Rossi really is going to step in and have a similar output right there. What is different in their game is face-off ability. He sure has struggled, 42.9% in the rookie year, then 45, now 517 so there is an increase. He sure has never been known to be a terrible faceoff player, but I do think there were some issues there. And that will be interesting to see, can Rossi be decent on the faceoff? Will a lack of size not allow him to force the puck, be physical on it? Interesting to see what happens. He sure does have some block shots as well. Rookie year, 39, then 44. This year, obviously less games played, has 37. So overall, very similar. His takeaways per giveaways, rookie year, 2.2, then 1.2, then 1.5. So it's decreased and increased. I think we might see something similar with Rossi. Very good defensive game. Be interesting to see, can his defensive stick be active without this tremendous size? He sure being six foot, I think has had some of these struggles statistically that we are seeing in terms of face-offs, in terms of uh, takeaways, giveaways, and then block shots. Hits per game, it's been about 0.8 every single season, so we might see a similar output there. But if we look at what he brings in terms of numbers, in the draft year for Halifax Mooseheads of the Q, 57 games played, 38 goals, 48 assists, 86 points. Obviously, it's tough to compare Q numbers to OHL numbers. The Q is usually more offensive. But I do think we see a very similar statistic here. Overall, we see very similar goal numbers, 39 and 56 for Rossi, 38 and 57 for Heischer. Obviously, assists much different, 81 versus 48, given Rossi older. But I do think we see a similar comparison here. And then taking the fact that there are two different leagues, two different teams, I think there's a lot of fit here. In Heischer's first year ever, 82 games played, 20 goals, 52 uh, points as a rookie. Next year, 17 goals, 47 points in 69 games. This year, 36 points, 14 goals in 58 games projects about 45 points, 17 goals. And so I think we're going to see a similar output. He's just had a bit of a tough time adjusting offensively. The Devils obviously have had their struggles. They did end up drafting Jack Hughes. That should help them. But the offensive output that he sure had in his rookie year, 82 games played, 20 goals, 52 points. I think we will see that from Rossi especially. Someone who, like I said, ultimately 20 goals, 50 assists, 70 points. I think 50 points is not out of the question as a rookie. If that's next year or the year after, I think Rossi is definitely ready to do so. Now, if we look lastly at what team fits best for Rossi in the NHL, we have to consider what team actually has the opportunity to draft him. In a lot of ways, this might come down to what happens with the lottery. But there's been so much hype with Tim Schitzel as well as Alex Lafreniere, Quentin Byfield, and then also guys like Drysdale and others these are the players that are going to go very high, as well as Cole Perfetti. As talented as Rossi is, oftentimes hype is a thing that drives where a player goes. And so Rossi might fall to fifth or sixth. I think in terms of pure talent, Rossi could definitely challenge to go at least third. 
Byfield might be tough to sell given how hyped he's been and how talented he is already, 11 years, 11 months younger. Rossi, though, certainly could challenge that. So I think the Minnesota Wild are the best pick. If the playoffs start right now based on standings, the Wild are out by one point. So the Wild would have a lottery chance, potentially could end up making it if the league restarts, continues the regular season. But I think overall, the Wild would be the best pick for Rossi. Whether they're able to do it is different. It would be interesting to see if that happens. But right now, the Wild's center depth, Eric Stahl, Eric Sinek, Galchenyuk, Miguel Koivu, Luke Cunnan. They also have a few other prospects, Adam Beckman mainly, as well as Alexander Holmanoff. Decent prospects, but they do not have pure number one center type. Of course, their best prospect being Matthew Boldy, who is a left winger, last year's top left wing talent. If we break down this, Eric Saul is 35 years old. He's a 2021 UFA. Odds are he's not resigning. After that, he'd be 36. He's already resigned for four seasons. Eric Sinek, he's a 2021 RFA. Been some struggles there. Galchenyuk, 26. He's a UFA this summer. A lot of people are wondering, will he go to the KHL? He's been definitely struggling since leaving Montreal. Had the struggles in Arizona, Pittsburgh, and now Minnesota. I don't think he's going to last. Koivu, 37-2020 UFA. Obviously the franchise best player and captain. Odds are he probably retires or signs on for one more year to play in that Winter Classic. And then Luke Cunnan, 22 years old, 2020 RFA. Finally had a bit of a breakout year. But none of these players are first-line players on an actual talented team. Eric Stahl is the last one that could be, but really he's more of a second-line player. And I think long-term you need someone like Rossi to step in, or at least a center, to be an effective top-line center for this team. If we look at Stahl this year, 66 games played, 47 points, 19 goals. Projects to 23 goals, 57 points. He's been tailing off a little bit in the wild system recently. If you look at his years past... He did have 22 goals, 52 points for the Wild, 42 goals, 76 points, 28 goals, 65 points. So there's been a bit of a tail off there statistically. Erickson Eck this year projects to 10 goals, 35 points, currently has 8 and 29 in 62 games. Actually been his best statistical output, really has not had the chance to break out as a player people expected. When he came into the league, definitely in uh, just a small amount of games, really looked to be an effective player. So far, it's been tough for him. He had 7 points in 15 games played when he first came in, then 16 and 75, 14 and 58. So this really was that breakout. Galchenyuk, only 7 points in 14 games for the Wild right now. This season projects at 10 goals, 30 points, counting Pittsburgh numbers as well. So Galchenyuk probably is not resigning. Koivu definitely has been trending downwards. 21 points in 55 games, only four goals right now. Years prior, he had 29 points, 45 points, 58 points. So a very consistent downturn right there. Kunin finally breaking out a little bit, 15 goals, 31 points, projects to 18 goals, 37 points. The year before had 17 points, the year before that only had four in 19. The 17 was in 49. And so Kunin might be breaking out as a potential top six center. But overall, the Wild lack anything there that could resemble a franchise player, let alone a top six player. Kevin Fiala, of course, amazing talent for them as a winger. Definitely seeing something like Rossi Fiala could be an amazing combo. When we see Rossi Quinn, uh, Jack Quinn, was a great combo this year, 52 goals, 62 games. I think we could see Fiala really breaking out to be a 30-35 goal scorer with Rossi. So thank you guys for watching. Comment below your thoughts. Where would you draft Rossi? Do you think he is better than Byfield? Is he NHL ready? Does it matter given this age difference? And does 5'9 affect his game? If you enjoyed this content, make sure to subscribe. Feel free to check out my Twitter, at HockeyLevine. Comment below what players you want to see next. And then lastly, check out the video of the day, which is going to be pinned in the first comment. And that is Alexis Lafreniere, possible generational talent, versus elite Quinn Byfield. Quinn Byfield, let me know your thoughts on that as well. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.